This is Gordon Pepper, and I'm here with Chris Fawcett. And that seems to be a very nice belt that you got over there. Sure do. Looking to keep it, too. Mm -hmm. so. Let's talk about you and your belt. And tell everybody who you are, because I think this is the first time I'm interviewing you. I am Biggie, Brian Walton. Um, I joined the UBA in 2019. Made a run at the heavyweight. That didn't go so well. Got knocked out number one contender. So I asked my buddy Chris to join. He joined with us, got on our class acts team. We ended up doing doubles, and here we are. Uh, you, you, before you went to Metro, you were a part of the New Jersey Northeast District, which is where your opponents come from, so I know that you are familiar with them, and they are familiar with the belts. They are Audrey Stell and Nick Avron, and they have held the belts before, and now they want to hold them again. How are you going to stop them from doing that? Just make one frame at a time, make our spares when we need to. It's all, it's all about a team. Tag when we need to. It's going to be a great match. There's no winning until you win. Uh, you can bowl anybody and lose. Um, you can talk a lot of shit. Well, I don't know if I can swear, but you, Poop. Can, you can talk a lot of crap to people. And that works. If you don't back it up, you're nothing. That's what we're about. We talk it out in the lanes. We don't talk it in person. We show it, show it in our, our bowling skills. You guys have held those little shiny belts that are over there before. Yep. And you like to do it again, I would assume, because if not, we wouldn't be here at this moment. Correct. So, talk to me about the match. I know you know who your opponents are. I know you know the team that they have been up against. Talk to me a little bit about game plan here. Strike. <laughs> Don't interview me, man. <laughs> Honestly, we kind of just come into these hoping to have fun and win, and we don't really ever have a game plan. Whoever's on, we keep in the longest and just go with it. Yeah, we're not, we don't have any kind of real game plan, just hope to bowl well and that's it. <laughs> we bowl well here and so do they. They bowled here last year in our division. They had a good match against us, so see who does better today. So why do people allow you to bowl against them here in the place where you guys bowl league? I'm just, just out of curiosity. First of all, I bowl four leagues, Nick bowls three leagues. We bowl everywhere. Just add it to the list of places people don't want to bowl us. And it's, it is what it is, but they're, they're willing to bowl us here. Um, and anyone can win. They're good here too. So I don't think it's a matter of where you're bowling. I think it's just a matter of who's having a good day, to be honest. Everyone strikes in Lodi. It doesn't even matter. It's everyone's home house. The Lodi China is everyone's friend. Good morning, everybody. Here from Lodi Lanes, my name is Gordon Pepper, and we are here for the monthly uncapped World Championship Series title match. Your champions are from Class Acts. They are Chris Fawcett and Brian Walton. And they are defending against a team that has been to the top of the mountain before. Uh, they are Arsenal, and they are the number one contenders. They've held the titles before in the form of Audrey Snell and Nick Gavron. This is a best of seven match. Whoever gets to four game, whoever wins four games first wins, and in this case, the belts. If it's Class X, they will retain. If it's Arsenal, they will be the two-time champions. So now let's talk a little bit about tag team. This is an original UBA staple. Here's how this works. A tag team is consisting of two bowlers from the same franchise. The first bowler that has been selected must bowl three frames, three full frames. After that, you can tag in your partner. There must be no more and no less than four tags. You can tag in the middle of a frame if you do, and your partner can complete the frame, but they must start the next frame. So, in the first game, let's see who's starting here. Class X, I believe it is going to be Beast Mode, a.k.a. Chris Fawcett. And usually Nick Gavin starts for Arsenal. I'm going to see if that is still correct. Nick, are you starting? Nick will be starting. So that is going to be game one. Game two, their teammates, Brian Walton and Audrey Snell, will be starting. So right now, Chris and Nick will be bowling the first three frames. And here we go. First ball out, Chris Fawcett strike. Now, this is done in a 1-2-2-2-2 two, 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 two pattern. So now Chris will bowl the first frame, Nick Gavin will bowl the next two, and so on and so forth. Because they're the champions, Class Acts gets to decide who goes first. In this case, it is them. So now we're waiting on Nick Gavin to throw his first shot. So I'd like to welcome everybody that's here this morning on a nice little Sunday morning. I am here with Tony Nieves, who's doing the camera work. And this is going to be fun. Again, Arsenal and Class Acts know each other. So they're very familiar. They used to bowl against each other in the New Jersey Northeast District. Gavin, first ball coming up. That ball looks good, and it is a little bit of a mixer. Having support from Audrey Snow. 
As we're going in, we are tied one strike apiece. If you just joined us, this is game one. We just started over here. It is a best of seven. Whoever gets to four wins. Now, right now, obviously, there's no tagging at this moment. You cannot tag until the first three frames are completed fully. I just did say that you can tag in the middle of a frame. You can, not during the first three frames. Nick Gavin looking for the first double of the match. That ball is very, very, very short. Short. Sure. One, two, four. So right now, a quick opening for Class Axe to take an early lead in this matchup. Nick Gavin, <laughs> well, I'm looking at, he's got a couple of different nicknames. I'm looking at the nickname of his shirt. He's got Back Row Bingo. Back Row Bingo is pretty much when you leave the, the 7, the 8, the 9, the 10, all usually in the same game. And I have no idea what the heck Nick was doing on that shot, except they completely missed wide right. So I, what, what was that? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> okay, Nick couldn't tell me. I couldn't tell you. Uh, more importantly, Chris is really happy about that because this is a huge break for Class Axe very early. So here we go. Fawcett, first shot here. Looking to double for them to take the lead in the match. And what are we doing here? 210. Just a reminder, this is a... This is an uncapped match. These are supposedly the bowlers with the 230 averages, and right now we're looking at a pair of opens in the second Damn frame. Right, you look terrible. <laughs> yeah, May maybe if, if the camera wasn't here, would that make your life a little better, sir? Huh? If we were not here shooting this match, would it make your life a little bit easier? Would you make you feel you're still gonna bowl just as bad? Almost makes the spare conversion, my faucet. But not. Class acts right now with an early four-pin lead, 28 to 24 in the second. Aye. Uh, you know what, hitting the head pin does you... Well, I don't know. I never think I've seen Nick miss the head pin twice in a row, ever. That's impressive. <laughs> uh, but, but then again, Chris just left the 210, so I'm not sure hitting the head pin helps. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Number one, will Chris hit the head pin, and number two, will he regret it? He does hit the head pin, and he will regret it. We got another 210. What are you guys doing? I, what, what about this is China, this is high scoring, I don't need my plastic ball, I don't need my urethane, I don't need what's going on. Yeah, well, you completely missed the head pin, and Chris probably wishes that he left your spare. I, maybe plastic would have made it worse. <laughs> All right. What do you mean, Gordon, stop it? This is fun to, uh, yes, yeah, definitely will make it more fun. So a pair of opens from Chris in three frames, and now Class Axe has got a 37 in the third. I, I would say Arsenal could take the lead here, but Nick would actually have to hit the hip pin for that to happen. Right now he's at a one out of three rate. He's only hit the hip pin once so far. Aw. I can make fun of Nick because, hey, we're friends, but I'm going to make fun of everybody here today. Hey, hits a hip pin. That's usually what happens in bowling. He hits a hip pin and all the pins go down. Every, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you can. Now, at this point, Arsenal has the lead. Both teams have completed three frames, which means you can theoretically tag out. Nick has decided not to tag Audrey, despite the fact that he hasn't hit the hip in here in lane 11 yet. Not sure if he's done that in practice. No. Yeah, well, we'll see what's going to happen here. Here's the next shot. Will he hit the hip pin? No, he does not hit the hip pin. 1, 2, 10. Now, Audrey, he's here for you to tag her in if you'd like, Nick. Audrey says, no, no, no. Well, we're going to see over here. So so far, Nick has yet to hit the head pin on lane 11 in three chances. Let's see. <laughs> now he's 0 for 3. He's got a New York Yankee batting record right now. Uh, maybe he's got a shot. No, he's 0 for 4 on the head pin at this moment. He, he makes the 210, and he misses the head pin completely. <laughs> yeah. All right, ball change. Where, are you sure you don't want that plastic ball that you're talking about? Okay, he's sure. All right, Chris Fawcett has also elected not to tag in Brian Wong. Let's see the hilarity that ensues here in their half of the fourth frame. Class Axe is looking to take the lead here. Chris Fawcett, is, oh, he almost left another pretty little split. He does hit the hat pin, and he actually leaves a one pin conversion. It was the 4-9, it's now the 4. However, the rate that they're bowling right now, and again, this is the uncapped matchup here. Audrey what, is the lowest average out of the four, I believe, with what, two team? No, I'm a in UVA 209. Okay. Hey, we got a spare. That is the first spare from anybody so far in this match. Hey, Chris has decided to tag. We finally get to see Brian Walton. So, so far we have a compelling matchup in the fourth frame in game one. Both teams are in the 50s. That is not wrong. You're not seeing a reprint. You're not seeing an old play. You have 13 people right now.
Um, Tanis to Buck, what is going on? Maybe I'm bad luck. I don't know. Usually I'm bad luck. I'm usually the dark cloud here. Brian Walton's first shot, and hey, all the pins go down. So we have two strikes on the board from Class Axe. Right now they have taken a 15 pin lead, and we finally have an attack from Arsenal. Audrey Snell's coming in. Nick right now is curiously studying the lanes. He's got that curiosity look. I was trying to figure out where he got 15 pins from. She didn't throw a shot yet. Oh, right now they're up by 15. Uh, well, now they're only up by nine. Actually, no, they're not. They're only up by eight. So, let's see. Both Arsenal and both Arsenal teammates are enjoying that one-two-four combination up there. Except, I, I have more faith that Audrey's going to hit at least one to make this fair. I have more faith in her than I do in you for spare shooting, Nick. Because the last time that I saw you guys over at Lodi Lanes, she knew how to throw spares, and she still does because I have faith on that. And she makes a spare. I made a 210 to win the game, all right? I, I can make some spares sometimes. <laughs> yes, and that was on um, the high side and we're on the low side, which right now nobody's ball is wrinkling at this point. I am. So right now we are in the halfway mark. We have two spares in 10 frames and four strikes. And both teams are in the 70s. Six frame up here, and I don't mean 170s, I mean 70s. Six frame up, Audrey, which is actually Leaving the best shot that Arsenal has had so far, leaves a 10 pin. Oh, excuse you, the shot in the third frame is all right. Uh, the, shot in the, the shot in the third frame is all right? From you? It's all right. Okay, it's all right. Well, all the pins went down. I, I guess that's all right. The Russian judge in Talent and Beauty gave that a three, but that's okay. It looks like, uh oh, hold on, nope. So right now we are at 50% spare shooting from both teams. <laughs> and right now we have 11 frames and six opens. So, I, I don't know, Tynesha, maybe you are bad luck. So, thank, thanks, you BA Bowling. Going too much talk, talk too much beforehand. I talk too much all the time, especially during this match, but at least this is entertaining at this moment. So, Walt coming in. Both teams, by the way, have one tag coming up, and hey, another slip. This one, a baby split, this one should be makeable, 2-7. Now, again, as we've noticed before, both teams have four tags that they can put in. Both teams have used one. I'm not sure if they're going to be eager based on their first bowler's performances to tag in their partners. However, they do have to do this at least two more times. Well, three more times. A total of four tags. Brian looks like he will make the spare, and he won't. So, opens for everybody. In the sixth frame, we have a sterling 85-80 to 80 matchup at this moment. Uh, class Axe is inexplicably up by five pins as we go into the seventh frame. Chris Fawcett is, I shouldn't even say mercifully, Chris Fawcett, when he came in, has <laughs> got a whole bunch of opens in Class Axe right now with a trip to the Valley of the Red Numbers at this moment. That is tag number two for Class Axe. They have two more that they have to take care of in game one. Arsenal right now has only made one, but it looks like Nick may be tagging in momentarily. Man, Nick has no idea what's about to happen, and you know what? I have no idea what's about to happen right now. <laughs> that makes all of us at this moment. Fawcett coming in, first shot, seventh frame. There's a strike. Well, the, the one thing right now, the one particular pattern besides the fact that nobody has figured out anything, is that at least on lane 11, three out of the four shots that Class Axe has thrown on that lane are strikes. The other one, an ugly spare. Nick coming in, tag number two for Arsenal. There's a strike over there. All right. So right now, from this standpoint, both teams are on strikes. There is a good chance that we'll get triple digits by at least one of these teams. If we get a 200 from either team, um, no, probably not. Eighth frame coming up. Class Axe holding on to a five-pin lead. Both teams on strikes going to the eighth again. Both teams need to make two, two tags. So where they do it, a little strategy is going to come into play here. Nick looking for the first double of the match, and he gets it. Not only is that the first double, it is the first strike that either team has thrown on the lane they did not start on. So we finally get a strike in an even number. That means Arsenal technically has a lead. If Class Act strikes here and doubles, and that would be their first one on lane 12, then they'll take the lead back. Fawcett right now still up at this moment. Shot here coming two, looking for the double. Oh, he got a double, all right, wrong one. Two, four, ten, another trip to the red numbers for Fawcett. 
That is number three. No, Denisha. It's no. Me. Hold on. Uh, Audrey, Audrey wants to help you out with some women's lip talk here. Denisha, it's definitely not you. You're not a uh, bad luck. I don't know what is going on. We, uh, it's, it's extra flooded today. So this is this is fun. <laughs> yeah, they'll blame me much, much longer than they'll blame you. Impossible spare here converted by Fawcett. Beautiful pickup by him. A at least now, class acts the damage is only they're only down by five. It could have been a lot worse. I mean, it still can be a lot worse. And going in the ninth, a spare off a double, but at least it stops the bleeding right now. Tag number three has come in. Here comes Walton. And again, this is I'm not sure whether or not I would have made this tag here, except they really don't have much of a choice in this matter. I mean, theoretically, they could, yeah, ninth, and then hopefully they get a mark in the 10th. That being said, strike is really going to help him at this point from Walton. If he gets it, that does not sound like a strike, and that definitely doesn't look like one. Three, six, seven, ten. That is the fourth, actually, I'm sorry, the fifth trip to the land numbers for Class Axe. They converted one. And if they want to stay in this game, they pretty much need to convert this one also. Wallen coming up here, looking to make the spare. That looks good. It does. Two converted spare, split spares in a row for Class X. So right now, that looks great. There's tag number three from the Arsenal. It looks great right now, however, and a major however here. And Nick, correct me if I'm wrong. Last time I checked, spares do not beat strikes. Correct. And potential right now for three in a row for Audrey Snell. Big shot here. She gets it. Huge shot for Arsenal. Right now, they are up by nine, but they're on a double to a spare, so theoretically, they're up by 19 going into the 10th frame. The best class acts can do is a 181. A strike here from Nick, and this is their fourth and final tag. A strike here will put them in the 180s. So strike here ends the game. This is for game one. Gavin shot looks good. It is. Four in a row, and the Arsenal figure it out when they need to. So right now, Nick Gavin needs one pin on the first ball. If he gets it, they take game one. If they don't, yeah, I'll make fun of him profusely. Arsenal with an outside shot at 200. I was making fun of them on that. However, it could happen. Second shot here. Well, that'll definitely get a pin. And they won't get 200. They will get the win. So right now, Nick, 189. I'm sorry, I said the best class action news is 181. I'm wrong there. It's 171. Not that it matters at this point because this one's over. I, I, you know what? When we were talking before, I didn't think that you would think 189 would be a winning score in this match. However, it is. Yeah, there we go, 189. It was almost 188. I wasn't necessarily convinced that he was making the spare. Now, so 189 is a winning score, sir. Yay. Talk to me about that. Yay! Yeah, yay! It's a little different. Yeah, well, in, in this, it doesn't matter how many strikes you throw, it matters. An, oh, and he gets a strike! I'm so glad that's on that, That's probably your line right there. And, and, and I say this jokingly, but not really jokingly. That was Chris Fawcett's best shot, or at least the shot that he got the best reaction on. Because any time that he's decided to hit the head pin, he's had a whole bunch of other pins shoot up with a big gap between them. So right now, Fawcett, let's see if he does that again or makes an adjustment. I, I think he'll make an adjustment. Just saying, a second shot. Now you're better off throwing it at the four pin, Chris. Yeah, yeah just saying. So Class Axe, well, assuming that he gets one, he probably will. We'll finish somewhere in the 160s. Fawcett here looking for a ball change. Right now, neither, even though the Arsenal did finish off with four in a row, I would make a safe bet that neither team has sort of figured it out right now at this frame count. This could be act one of Shakespeare's A Comedy of Errors coming up. But at least I'll say this, this has been entertaining. And then that's what you have to do. Yeah, we'll call it that, we'll call it entertaining. Fawcett will make this, no, he will not make the spare, never mind. Uh, so at the end of game one, Arsenal 189, Class Acts 160. Arsenal is up one to nothing in a game that I think both teams would rather forget. Maybe not Arsenal as much because again that puts it up. Yeah, I would say the lanes have put out a stalwart defensive effort, sir. Yes, yes they have. Better than the New York Jets defense so far. There's a lot of things better than that. That that is true. 
I, I cannot complain there, but even though the NFL draft will be coming up momentarily, we'll start game two now. If you remember, Chris Fawcett and Nick Aaron started the first game. So their partners must start the second game. For Arsenal, that is Audrey Snell. For Class Axe, that is Brian Walton. So, Nick, give us your thoughts on that first game besides a frigging mess. A frigging mess. Besides frigging mess. Fun. I like things like that. I mean, I miss some easy spares, but I like it when they're harder. You definitely miss some easy spares. And Audrey, Audrey did not miss a hard spare. She gets a corner pin. And we're starting game two. Arsenal on the board with a spare. Class X, Brian Walton. And, and again, at least the one good thing about this for Brian is that he cannot, hopefully for them, they will not possibly do worse than what Chris Fawcett did the first three frames. Because that was uh, fugly. Walton coming up, first shot here. Chris Fawcett got to strike his first ball up. Walton needs a 10 pin, but makeable spare. So far, we think. It's much more fun. If I lose, if we lose when they're hard and we got out bold, it's okay. But if we lose when they're wide open, and the people you're bowling against just carry the world, it's not fun. It's a very miserable time. No, I, you know what, I, I could agree with you on that. A loss on this over a loss on something else. I, I'll completely agree with you on that because it, it's always frustrating when you think it's a carry contest and it's angle of entry and the other team gets some crazy bizarro strikes to beat you, which has happened to everybody, myself included on that. So no, when it's this and it's hard and you just get out bold, you, you feel bad obviously, but you don't feel as bad. So I get that. So Arsenal nodding their heads up and down in approval. I know that you can't see the video, so I'll be doing some commentary. The video that you can see here is Brian Walton looking for strike number one. Does not do it, does leave a makeable spare here, four pin. All right now, got a pair, pair of potential spares here for class acts, which will match the one spare the Arsenal has. If you've just joined us, and hello everybody that's just joined us, this is Gordon Pepper. And right now, we have a match between Arsenal and Class X. Class X is your uncapped tag team champions. However, right now, they're down one zip to Arsenal. Now, Audrey Snell is up for Arsenal. A strike here will give Arsenal a one pin lead going to third frame. Anything else? And we'll see what happens. So, now in this matchup, both bowlers must shoot the first three frames, again, according to tag team rules. So you will definitely see Audrey and Brian showing up regardless. And right now, Audrey's shot looked better than yours on lane 12 because at least she hit the head pin. Fine with me. Teamwork. Woo. Teamwork is good. Now, if she could do that over here, Arsenal will have a cute little lead going in, and then Nick's got a decision to make. You can change out, or you have to tag out. Four frames. I don't have a decision. She makes the decisions. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Say that again in front of the mic. I don't make the decisions. Audrey makes the decisions. She's the brain. She's the doctor. Audrey is the decision team, has the brains, and right now, ooh. I just throw the ball. You just throw the ball? So you throw she bowl? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Audrey right now leaving a 10 pin. So right now, Arsenal, nine spare strike, another nine spare, and they will sort of kind of have a one pin lead. And I say that because class X has got to go up. So let's see if Audrey will make the spare. That ball looks dead on, and it is. Arsenal with a quick one pin lead as we go into class X's version of the third frame. So Tanisha right now, no opens on the board, you have good luck. Or at least your luck hasn't gone bad yet, or my luck hasn't gone bad yet, or both of our lucks haven't combined to make evil bad luck, at least not yet at this moment. Walton, third frame. And hey, there's a Nick Cavern shot, one, two, four. <laughs> so, so probably hit the head pin the second time. Difference, you, you, you'll say he'll make the spare on this. Right. You know, you can walk home. <laughs> it's a far walk. It's a, it's a little bit of a far walk. They, they, they live far away. So Walton coming up to make the spare attempt here. No, nope, not as far as Denville. However, Walton does make the spare. So now both teams have completed three frames. They can now tag if they wish. They must tag four times. And Chris has decided he's gonna make tag number one right here. So here we go. Chris thinks he's got a look. That is tag number first one for class X. While I write this down. Now, traditionally, when I was the in charge of World Championship Series, I told, I warned teams whether or not they did or did not have enough tags. That is not my responsibility this time around. 
Though, if they can ask me, I will help them. If they don't ask me, I won't help them. And this is when you decide whether or not you want to make tags or not. Chris's choice to make a tag, maybe not the best idea in the world because he left the 2, the 4, the 8, and the 10. So, Nick, what do you think about this strategy, even though I know that you've told me you don't make the decisions, but just from a spectator point of view, what do you think about this? I think it might, was the right decision in the sense that he went 9-9-7. Nine, nine, might as well try and change, see if the other one got a better look. Can't help it, maybe he just threw a bad shot. You never know. Well, that, that well, like hindsight is always 20-20. So not a bad choice, however bad result. 60 right now for Class Axe in the fourth frame, which is with a strike here, what the Arsenal will have in the third. So Nick Gavin does tag in. That is tag number one for Arsenal. They've got three left. Class Axe has three left as well. If Gavin can, can strike here, Arsenal will be up by 20 with a potential for 30. And hey, more fun for everybody, 2-4-10. And, and again, I understand what Nick's point is in terms of here's why you make the tag. There's two theories on this, and as you know, I've participated in the, in the tag team series also. There's two parts. Number one, yeah, you do that to see if you have a better look. And number two, yeah, you know, we've been in many, many opens in game one. At least we've got spares. Maybe we should keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I told Nick right now my goal is to kind of hit the pocket and make my spares. And, I mean, obviously that's our goal right now, but it's just it's very different right now. So this is interesting. <laughs> right, well, right now, hit the pocket, make your spares is a winning strategy at this moment. Arsenal is up. They're only up by five. Job, Nick. Nick Hill. Um, Nick Hill. Nick Gavin with the strike. Nick Hill. Nick Hill, my teammate. Hi, Nick. Shout out to Nick Hill. But that is not Nick Hill up there. That is Nick Gavin. Yeah. Say so, two eight tech. Come on, Gordon. Yeah. So there's a call, Bark. Call Buckley. I'm good. I call him Call Barkley. Got Nick Gavin. This is good. And Brian's on the wrong way. <laughs> your, your teammate just shot. Just just left the two four eight ten up there. You sure you want to go up there? He said I'll throw better. Uh, maybe he did. That's tag number two already. So, class acts right now, two tags. They've got two more to go. Got a different shot, same result. One, two, eight. That is not a Nick Gavin leave because Nick Gavin left the one, two, four last time. That was the Nick Gavin. Yes, that, we're calling that the Nick Gavin for, for now during this match. It, it was just the nine pin, now it's the one, two, four. That's the new Nick Gavin. He's got his back row bingo shirt on, and I said to him, we're not doing this today, but uh, we're just leaving the whole front row instead. <laughs> you're right. Now, now you're, you got front row bingo going on right now, and Brian Walton joining the party at this point. Two straight opens for class acts, and, and right now they are in trouble early here. You know, I was making fun of both teams in, in the 50s in the fourth frame game one. That actually is great compared to what's going on right now in game two. Class X, 68 in the fifth frame. Going into the second half of game two, Arsenal took game one. Right now, they're threatening to blow game two open at this point. Strike's almost mandatory at this moment. There it is. Well, with the strike, that gets Class X. Actually, gives them their first strike of the game. Right now, Nick Gavin looking for Arsenal's third strike of the game. And if they get it, potentially, they can be up by 27. Actually, no, I'm sorry, 57. No, 27. First shot here coming up, looking for the double. Hey, it's a double for Nick Cavern. Audrey says, yeah, sure, that's great. Go again. Now, Audrey says, I trust him. So three in a row here, and Arsenal will start to sprout out a lead. As I said before, they're at 27. Another strike here will keep them at 27 and put a lot of pressure on class acts. Gavin right now looking for three in a row. Gets it. Ten pin goes down. Arsenal right now holding on to a 27 pin lead. And, and now for class acts, they've got to throw strikes. You're running out of frames in game two. Right now, another tag to Chris Fawcett. That is tag number three. They have one more afterwards to take it back to Walton. Arsenal right now only one tag, so you're going to have to see Audrey coming back in some point soon. There's a big strike from Fawcett. 
made the adjustment after the what was that going on in the midpoint of the game at 2-0 and for Class Axe. Now all of a sudden it's serious time. Three frames left, being down 27, that is something that is makeable. You can get yourself out of that hole, but again, strikes are tantamount at this moment. And when I've said, Arsenal's got to make a tag very soon. Here comes Audrey tagging in. They'll be tag number two when she gets up in the eighth frame. Chris right now looking for three in a row, gets it. There's the shooting that I thought that we we're going to be seeing at the beginning of game one. Which we didn't see because both teams decided to play with Tinker Toys or Lincoln Logs or whatever they were doing before they started this game. I, I do not know. But if you were here from game one, you know what I'm talking about. Audrey's looking for four in a row on the tag, and she gets it. Slight mix is there. Arsenal stays up by 27, going to the ninth frame. Tag number three coming in. Now, the interesting thing about tag teaming, this is the third tag coming in. Arsenal has to tag one more time. However, you only have to tag to shoot the last shot. So theoretically, Nick Gavin could throw the ninth, the first two in the tenth, and then have Audrey come in and clean up if they decide they want to do that. Now, can Gavin increase their lead to five in a row? Yes, he can. Arsenal right now still up by 27. If they go out the door, that is a 245, which is, oh, almost 80 pins better than their first game. Okay, so we only got five minutes of practice, right? So that first game was really like finishing our 10 minutes of practice. Oh, that's oh, what yeah, it yeah, is. yeah, 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 yeah. I can't say that myself. <laughs> every time I miss practice. I'm just trying to make an excuse. Over every time I miss practice this year, I shot 8:30 or higher, so I can't say that. <laughs> Foster right now had to the strike in the ninth frame to keep by 27. He does not. Two, four, eight. And right now. Class Axe is in trouble. As I said, the best Arsenal can do is 245 at this point. The best that Class Axe can do, assuming that he makes the spares, a 195. And right now, Arsenal's got a 185 and ninth. So, barring a giant purple rhinoceros, breaking out of the walls at Lodi Lanes and goring Nick Gavran, this game is going to be pretty close to being over. Wong coming in to make the fourth and final tag. Like a book of your sayings. There's a whole bunch of weird sayings that I have. Purple rhinoceros. Purple rhinoceros. But then that one time. Charging through the wall. Told me he was going to bang me. And I was like, bro, what? <laughs> you did say that. I did say that. <laughs> that. That was completely taken out of context. And this game is now completely taken out of context. Ten pin is up mathematically. Now the game is over. Best class acts can do is a 184. Arsenal already has 185. The only way. The only way that the Arsenal screws this up is if they tag improperly, which has, by the way, happened, not to the Arsenal, but it has happened in a couple of matches that I have done commentary on where I've been like, hey, their score is higher, but they're going to lose the game because they screwed up their tags. So I have done that. So, all right, we've got a message from Carl Barkley here. That ball... Read the middles. Class Axe previous shot did not pick up at all. Carl is exactly right here. I'm going to go hurry over over here. So, right now, Class Axe finishes with a 183. Nick Gavin right now shooting, leaves the 10 pin, and that will stay like that. Now they have to tag here, and they will. And the reason why is, again, you must make four tags. Even though the game is mathematically over, that first bowler must throw the last shot. If Nick had a brain fart and tried to make the spare and missed and ended the game, they lose because you only have three tags. That is the fourth and final tag. That is now a legitimate legal game as long as Audrey throws the last shot. Nick is not moving from this area, which means Audrey will throw the last shot, and that will end the game. So, while we do that, I'm going to actually slide this over here. Because I feel a lot of wind behind my back, and I don't want it going in the microphone. That would not be good. But what is good, well, it's good enough. Nine pin at the end of game two. Arsenal 223, class Axe 183. Arsenal right now up two zip over your champions. If this repeats itself for another two games, I could say we have new champions, but we won't. We will have the second reign of Arsenal. One game at a time. Yep. One game at a time. You never know. You never know what could happen. Well, I was going to say Class Axe, dangerous team, as we all know. Yep. They've won the titles. Now, we're starting game three. Now it goes...
capitalist, uh, on the capitalist, two of them. That is true. They definitely have a higher team average than you guys do. Now where you're starting game three, whenever Chris Fawcett is ready, now it goes back to Chris and Nick starting off the match. And last time we had this, we had four opens in three frames. So this could either be... You're playing low ball, thank you. You're playing low ball. Let, let, let's see what games you're playing now as we start game three. Let's see if we're playing bowling or golf. All right. Just making excuses. All right, well, yeah, excuses, not excuses. We're going to figure out what we have here. Fawcett right now, first shot, game uh, game three coming up, and we're playing golf, 7-10. Oh, Carl. Let me say hi to Carl. Yeah. Oh, you want to say hi to Carl? Hi, Carl. I hope you're feeling better with that mouth all shut up and everything. <laughs> yeah, he fell and broke his straw, and now it's... Mm, 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 mm. This is the only way he can communicate now. <laughs> well, I, I think well, I, I think Carl will eventually be able to talk, and I'm not sure you're going to like what he has to say the next time that you guys chat. It, yeah, he is. It won't be congratulations on winning or condolences on losing. Aww. And maybe, well, maybe something else. Right now, another trip to the land of the red numbers for Carl Fawcett. And uh, yipes, Arsenal again has a chance to take an early lead. So. Inverted on here. What, the scores? Yeah. No, no, I mean, like the picture, it's inverted on here. It's not when, you, when it's online. Oh, uh, no, it is not. Oh, no, no it's, it's normal picture online. I was going to say, Nick looks like a lefty. He does look like a lefty. And he, oh. Right, out of trouble. We, we almost had golf to see over here. It, it, it's a four pin. That should be makeable, but I, I say that when he completely whiffed on the one, two, four in this lane in game one. So anything can happen. You can stare at me all you want. You can rewind the tape back a half hour and you know exactly what I'm talking about, sir. For those of you that have joined, uh, we've had an entertaining game one and game two. It has not been a strike fest. It has been a let's see how many spares that we can miss from both teams fest. And, and I can say that with the scores, so far there's been one score over 200. And that was a 223. And then let's not talk about the other ones. It was a very hard fought 223. So that was there. And then uh, right now Class Axe has a 343 after two games, so you can only imagine what they've been doing so far for those people that just joined in. Carl Buckley says, go get the win. We have, we have enough people here for, I think, maybe a little trivia. I'll find out later. Maybe. We'll see. All right, so we're going to play a little trivia. I don't know what price we're going to have. Maybe we'll just play, play for fun. Maybe we have something. Uh, we have, I'm being told, you got a $25 gift card. So we're going to be playing uh, for a little something-something. At the end of this game, we'll have a little trivia, and uh, whoever wins it wins. I'll give you a hint. It is. It will be, and I'll be a little bit specific here, so I'll let you uh, either start thinking about it or start doing your research on UBA TV or UBA Today Info. It is about women in the World Championship Series. That is the topic. So that's that. We'll see if you know the trivia question, and if you know the answer. And again, if you do, twenty-five dollar gift card. So I'd like to thank everybody that's showing up here. Right now it is game three. Arsenal up to zip. Right now they have an 11-pin lead. Fawcett in the third frame. has got to be on lane 11. This is where you left the 7-10 pin last time. And he makes the adjustment this time. 2-0 for, uh, for Class X. Right now, theoretically, 9-pin lead. Nick Gavin right now for the Arsenal. This is his third frame. And again, after the third frame, you can tag. So we'll see what happens. So Carl says, we will be at Lodi shortly. See you all soon. Yep, I guess we'll see him soon. We'll see if he'll be in talking mode at that point. Yeah, or if he goes, mm 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 Gavin right now looking for a double. He gets it. Gavin got it. Audrey says, keep going. Right now, Arsenal up by 11 as we go into the fourth frame of game three. Coming up over here, this is Gordon Pepper. Welcome to everybody that's joined in to Uncapped Title Matchup. Right now, two-zip Arsenal, looking to make it three-zip. Gavin right now, fourth frame coming up on a double, looking for three in a row. Looking for a little turkey. Got it. Three in a row for the Arsenal, and as sloppy as they were looking the first game, it seems like they found something in the middle of game two. Had, I believe, five in a row, 
for game two. Now looking at three of them for game three. Class Axe, now he did not make the tag. Fawcett is still up. Class Axe right now looking for three in a row by themselves. Fawcett right now, that ball looks good. It is. Three in a row for Class Axe. Here we go. Here's the strike fest that we we're talking about. There it is. <laughs> Little 95 South reference there, or tag team reference, depending on which version of whoop, whoop, or what there it is that you have. I have both versions because I am a club geek with all the remixes. I know my musical background, I am not afraid to admit it. Fawcett right now, looking for four in a row. Not afraid to admit that either. Four in a row for Class X, here they come. Back and forth now, Nick Evans staying in for Arsenal. Coming up at the halfway mark of game three. And no, the trivia question will not be about Gordon's musical preferences. Could be fun, but no. Gavin looking to match serve with four in a row. And, well, he gets out of trouble, 210. Not there, he just leaves a two pin. So, theoretically out of trouble, however, Class Axe will have their first lead in any of the three games this late in the game. Brian's looking up at me going, is that true? Yeah, that's true. That's how crazy this game has been, and that's how dominant Arsenal's been right now. Gavin makes a spare. Now we get a tag, and that is the first tag in the match from anybody. Audrey Snell comes in. That is tag number one for Arsenal. They've got to make four. Class X has got to make four. Right now, they haven't made any. Snell coming up. Six frame. Class X, theoretically, it is an even game, but Class X has the advantage because they are on a double to a spare for Arsenal, except now make it a strike for Arsenal. Gavin says, show me how to do it. Audrey says, okay. Okay, she does. All right, now, are they going to make the tag get for Class X? No, they are not. Fawcett is still in. They were saying before, you gotta got to ride the hot hand of the bowler. And right now, they're writing the hand of... They're writing the hand of Chris Fawcett. I'm not going to say what Nick Gavin's doing with his hot hand. You can all use your imagination. Fawcett right now, looking for five, gets it. Now, eventually, they're going to have to make a tag very soon, and there it is. Theoretically and theoretically, you can wait to make the first tag in the ninth frame and then hoping that the other bowler strikes out and goes strike, strike, strike. That's risky. I've seen teams do it. Teams have done it, and a bunch of teams have done it and gotten away with it. I, I don't think I'd ever take that chance, to be honest, because with the amount of stone nines and stone eights that Nick leaves, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if you try to do that and you leave a stone nine or a stone eight, the game's over. Walton making a huge strike there. That's 6-0 for Class Axe. Finally get a little bit of motion from that team. Here comes Chris Fawcett. Six in a row for Class Axe. Back row bingo's up. That's tag number two for Arsenal. And, and again, Class Axe made in one tag. They've got three more. Arsenal's got to make two more. Gavrin looking to make... I don't know why you would make the tag there. Where And, and uh, Matt Brzezinski, who's ironically enough a member of Arsenal, being the boo-birds for Nick Gavrin. Why, why you're rooting against your own team, I don't know. But hey, that's Matt Brzezinski's style. Tough love, is that what it's called, tough love? Oh yeah, okay, that's good. Anyway, Nick Gavin right now, leaving the two, four, five, eight. He's got a little bucket out there. And as I was saying before, I don't know why you would have made the tag there because that's where Nick has lost his look. And you were trailing, and now you're trailing by even more. I probably would have made, a, would have made the tag here, which is why he was striking. Immediately. Apparently. Tag number three going up to Audrey. Audrey, oh, look out. Cross a lot. That crossed a lot. 3 9. Double wood. So, well, I was going to say, it's, it, it is much better than the first game. However, it looks like Class Axe has figured something out. They've got six in a row. If they want to make it eight in a row, this game will effectively be over at this point, and Class Axe will get on the board. So, Audrey, that ball's going to hold on. It doesn't. And with that open, this game may be effectively over. Arsenal, the best they can do is a 226. Oops. Oopsies, two more strikes. Class Axe will be at the minimum 219, which means they will not need a mark in the 10th frame. 
There is tag number two over to Fawcett. Class Axe, two more tags to go. Fawcett right now working on six, looking for seven. There's that shot. That ball looks good, and it is. Little kick out. Kick out, little right foot action there from Fawcett. Now there's a tag, and, and again, as Audrey has said, and she's absolutely right, if you don't want to have to make two tags in a 10 frame, you need to make your tag now. Brian Walton in. And right now, as I said earlier, best Arsenal can do is 226. Class acts even without throwing a shot, 189. A strike ends. The only way Arsenal really gets back into this match is open, open by Class Axe. Or two weak marks. That does not look like an open, and it is not. Again, Class Axe does not need a mark to close out game three, so it looks like they will get in the board. 2-1 is a very makeable hole to get out of. You definitely do not want to go down 3-0 at all at any time for anybody. 2-1 is makeable. You got yourself some cushion. And that is exactly what happened with Class Axe. They'll be down 2-1. So right now, Nick Gavin, he's back in. That is their fourth and final tag. And hey, there's that stone nine pin we were talking about. Nick Gavin having loads of fun with lane 12. And when I say that, it means he probably wants to take that purple rhinoceros that I was talking about and have it mash up and down the lane and change the oil pattern a little bit. Gavin right now looking to make the spare. He will. Right at a 10th frame coming up. It's all Nick Gavin at this moment in the 10th frame. And then it will probably be all Fawcett in the 10th frame. Because you got to make that tag once in a while. And since the game is mathematically over, the only way the class acts loses is if they screw up the tags. Which is possible. I don't see that's happening. Because Chris is giving me the that's not happening look. He could even throw in the gutter twice and they'll still win. Okay, Chris Fawcett has said if he throws his ball in the gutter, he will sell all of his equipment at this point. I don't think he's going to sell all of his equipment at this point, even if he does throw the ball in the gutter. I'm sorry? I'll drive, drive by right into the river. I mean, you can literally gutter out and still win. So right. Yeah, exactly. You, you can actually could throw the ball in the gutter twice and win. Because, again, the best that Arsenal can do right now is 216. Class X already has a 219. So this one's over, and Nick Cavan says, nah, let's try something different. Let's try a different ball. Let's try something different. Let's try something different. Yeah, whatever. All right, Gavin will make the spare. Maybe. Nope, he does. All right, Arsenal will finish. Come back here, scrap paperwork. Arsenal will finish with 206. And Class X will probably have a high game of this moment out of anybody which either goes to show you the caliber of bowling or the struggles that they've had during the first two games. Fawcett can go out the door. By the way, if he does, it's a 279, and that's one. So that, well, that, that's not a gutter. That, he goes, that, that's your gutter. That's not a gutter. That's a strike. You can't fool me. And what you also can't fool is the lanes nine in a row for class acts. I'm sure we're, they were wondering, where was this the first two games? Oh, oh, okay, so Arsenal use that exclusive. Class Axe will use the same one. But we only had five minutes worth of practice. Oh, there's a nine pin. All right, nine pins for everybody. However, Class Axe will finish with a 268. Assuming that Fawcett makes a spare, I'm pretty sure he will. I have confidence. Confidence. Nick is looking very surplus at this moment. And he's blowing me kisses, apparently. You're enjoying the fan. That is your greatest fan right there behind you. Oh, stop. Stop. Boo. I can make dad jokes just as well as anybody else can. Does that mean I get to call you daddy? No, you do not get to call me daddy. At the end of game three, <laughs> Class Axe 268, Arsenal 206. And, uh, yeah, you, you don't get to, yeah. How about daddy? Uh, no. Anyway, how about trivia question? You ready for a trivia question? Sure. All right, so we're starting game four here. This is our UBA trivia question of the game. And one of the things that I did mention is that we're going to talk about women in the World Championship Series. Aye. And while we're, while we're talking about that, a prompt 4-9 from Audrey. So, and again, I don't want you to answer. I want everybody in the chat room to answer. So right now, now there have been chat room. So, no, answer is not Jackal. 
So, anyways, there has been a number of women that have bowled in the World Championship Series that have won titles besides the Vincents, for our argument's sake, Audrey Snell and Uncap. The first female welterweight champion was done at Battle Bowl, I believe during the first or the second year of Bowlerama in Delaware, was the first female welterweight champion. Here's the question. Who was the first female welterweight champion? I will accept either the UBA nickname or the government name. So again, here's your question. Who is the UBA's first female welterweight champion? So now, well, you don't know. Maybe somebody else does. Nobody, nobody has any idea. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you when it is. Maybe it will later as a hint, but we'll see. So anyway, we've got, ah, hello Mr. DC says let's go Axe. Well right now Axe has got a little work to do. They're down 2-1. However, they do have the lead in game four. Thanks to Brian Walton's spare and Audrey Snell's open. Class Axe up by court two as we go into the second frame. So see, I don't know. There haven't been any guesses yet in the trivia question. We may have saved ourselves 25 bucks in terms of that gift certificate. I pulled out a toughie this time around. So the question, if you missed it, who was the UBA's first female welterweight champion? So there's a question here. Frame two, Brian Walton. And he did exactly what Chris Fawcett did in frame one of game three on the exact same lane, which is, hi there, 710. Everybody's playing back row bingo today. They're inspired by the back of Nick Gavin's jersey, apparently. Yeah. Then, Nick, what led to this inspiration? The amount of eight pins and nine pins I leave. Yes, they, they say that you look like an inspiring character from a, by the way, happy uh, week after Easter for everybody that partakes in that sort of stuff. And a lot of people have said that. My now, day. That was your day last week? I rose for your sins. I died and rose. You died and rose for my sins. Then you, then you had to be dead for a very long time. Actually, you have been, apparently. So, Audrey, right? Uh, I definitely not perfect. And neither is Audrey's shot there. 2 4 10. You helped me segue so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. He's not very happy about that segue. So sorry. So, so right now, we, we thought with both teams throwing lots of strikes that we we're going to get a high scoring match in game four. So far, no. We're back to game one shooting. Maybe on the spare attempt. No. So, right now, four frames, three trips to the land of, land of the red numbers. Class Axe is up by 10, 27-17, and if you were here from the beginning, you saw exactly what happened at game one, and it's game one all over again. Except this time, no strikes to start off the match. We have opens to start off the match. Audrey right now, and again, before you say, well, why don't they tag? They can't yet. That's a makeable one. That's a two pin. It's looking to see if there was an eight pin behind it. There is not. Single pin spare attempt coming up. Now they can tag after the third frame if they wish. Of course, if they don't wish, then Audrey keeps bowling. If they do wish, there's no guarantee, based on what Nick did game three, that the scoring's going to get any better. All right, spare attempt made by Audrey. Arsenal's on the board with a mark right now, which is the same number of marks that Class Axe has. If they mark again, they have the lead. If they open, then uh, yipes. I'm sure if the female UBA welterweight champion that I was talking about in the trivia question was here, she probably would do a decent job on these lanes. I would think. Maybe, maybe not. And there's a strike. So Class Axe right now does have a 10-pin lead, potentially 20 with the strike off the double. Now the question is, are they going to tag? And the answer right now is no. I'm asking Chris to go help me get the paperwork which went flying because I did not anchor it down. I know, boo me. Bad Gordon, yes, that, thank you. So I'll be thanking Chris. Now the question is, will Chris be thanking Brian if Brian shoots a double right here? That is the question, and the answer is gonna be yes. Two and over class acts. They're back on the board quickly in game one. Nobody, I'm sorry, game four, nobody's made any tags yet. Except now, first tag coming up. They will tag in Nick Gavin for Arsenal. And we are going to keep the paper down here with the battery charger. And the nine pin's gonna stay up for Nick Gavin. Aye. 
Uh, right now, Arsenal down by 22 at this moment. Nick right now looking to make the spare. Let's see if he does so. Ball looks good, he's got it. So Arsenal does have a little bit of a cushion. They did win the first two games. So they were up 2-0. If they lose the next two, and they lost the first one, it'll be tied 2-2. That being said, they would much they would much preferably be up 3-1, and I don't know why Chris Fawcett's going over to the line. It's not his turn yet. <laughs> Though apparently we know that Class X will be making tag number one in the fifth frame. So right now, I don't know what Arsenal is doing. Nick right now is playing with his, I shall say, equipment. Because that's just too... The fruit fair is hanging way too low for me to be picking at and going, <laughs> he's playing with... <laughs> yeah, no, not going to do that. No, we are not. We are somewhat sometimes high class here in the UBA. Sometimes. Sometimes and somewhat. Gavin right now in the fifth frame. We are going into the second half of game four. Still nobody has come up with the answer to the trivia question. And I did make this one a toughie. The first women's welterweight champion in the UBA was on the northeast side, and that done. Hey, there's a strike, albeit not one we wanted one. After that stone nine, I'll take that. Hit the pocket, get a strike. Now, on the other side, hit the pocket, get a strike. Rrr. The left is well. Well, apparently, you know, on lane 12, when you try to put that in the pocket, you've left the nine pin. We left the new shot called the Gavron. We left the one, two, four. Slappy mess on 11, strike. Yay. So the trivia question was, first UBA female welterweight champion was crowned at Battle Bowl a number of years ago, one of the first times that Battle Bowl was held in Delaware. Who won the title? That is the question. I will give you a little bit of a hint later on if nobody gives the answer. Or again, maybe we just save on the budget. Budget saver. All right, right now Chris is wishing that he had that ball back, 2 4 10. Now he's giving Arsenal a chance to sneak back up on this one. However, this is makeable. He made this, I believe he made this early on, or made something close to it early on in this match. However, he's not going to do that again. Yeah, so that's a 2-4-10. Class acts right now following the form here in, in this match. 82 in the fifth frame. Arsenal not doing much better, though. If they get a double, they'll have an 86 in the fifth frame. I will say this, these matches have been competitive. Not necessarily high scoring, but they've been competitive. Fawcett right here, second half of game four, first shot strike. So right now, right now Arsenal down by 26, except they have a strike to an open, so they will be down by 16. And a strike here from Nick Gavron will give them a double, they'll be down by six. If they win this, they're up 3-1. If they don't win this, they're tied two games apiece. Six frame, game four, coming up. Nick Gavin, ball looks okay, it's there. Nick Gavin, and it's crazy for me to say this, almost has as many strikes as he does non-strikes now on lane 12. He's one away from that ratio. <laughs> That's a stat that Nick probably would like me to not discuss at this moment. No, you cannot mute the audience. The, the, the audience, uh, which, is, which is starting to fill in, so I'll repeat the trivia question. Uh, audience is starting to come in. Nick Gavin's looking for three in a row here, and he's hit the, doing most of the striking on lane 11, and there's another one. Three in a row for Arsenal, and that forces Class Axe to strike here in the seventh frame, or they will lose their lead. Actually, theoretically, Class Axe has already lost their lead. Strike here only keeps it down to four. I can math, usually. Fawcett, seventh frame coming up. That ball looks okay now, and this is where I probably would have made a tag here. 4-8. Brian Walton, has Brian been in this match yet? Brian, have you been in this game yet? Have you been in this game yet? Yeah, okay, so that was one. Oh, that's right, it's game four, Durr. Have you been in this game twice, I should ask? No, that's okay. That's that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That that's what I had. I was double checking that. Like, wait, both teams have only tagged once, and we're going into the eighth frame, and that means there needs to be a flurry of tags coming up soon. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm not crazy here. Okay. 
I mean, I may be crazy, but just not crazy at this point. Yeah, everybody's saying, Gordon, you are crazy. Okay, fine, I'm crazy. That being said, here's here is tag number two. Brian Walton's coming in. Class X right now, down by 14. And they're gonna be down by more, 4-6. And uh, let's see, Brian Walton's jersey says it's that time. No, it's not that time for that. It is not that time. Maybe for the Arsenal, it is that time. I'm sorry, why do you keep me around? Because I consistently... How has no one punched me in the mouth? I don't know. Someone tried to strangle me a couple of weeks ago. You like that. You were like, yeah, that, That's not the kind of choking that I was looking for, no. Nick, Nick Hill is making insinuations about my life, which I only wish was that exciting, which, which, it's, which it's not. Oh, I'm, uh, that's great. It, it's not that exciting. Audrey right now looking for four in a row. Tag two doesn't get it. Does leave something makeable. Three, six, ten. Arsenal up now, up by eight at this moment. If she makes the spare, you'll be up by 24. Because you'll pick up six off the strike and then another ten potentially off the open by a class axe. The best class, the more you know. And here's some other more stuff that you may or may not know. Best class axe can do is a 189. Right now, if Arsenal goes out the door, they're looking at 2 teen, assuming again that Audrey makes a spare here, and she will. Audrey with the spare. Arsenal right now is up by 24, potentially with a strike. Big shot here in the ninth frame from Gavra, and there's, there's tag number three. Now here come the tags. Here they come. Here they come to save the day. So mighty tags are on the way. Yeah, that was bad. I apologize to everybody for that. That was awful. So right now, Class Axe has got to tag two more times. If Gavin here gets a strike, which he does, thanks to the 10-10, Audrey had complete and 100% faith in that shot, didn't you? I had no faith. Uh, yikes, no, I didn't. I said, right, right when he let it go, I said, oh, God. Yeah, no, wait, I, I think the mic uh, maybe overheard you on that. Yeah, it went from, oh, God, good job. Now, now what that means is that Class Axe cannot cannot shut out Arsenal. They can force Arsenal to throw a couple of shots here, but right now, they can't throw out and cause, bleh, they cannot lock out Arsenal, but what they have to do in order to force them to do anything is to throw strikes, and there's one from Fawcett. Now that's tag number three. Tag number four is coming up. It looks like they're gonna have Brian Walton come in. I don't know if this is the right move or not, because the last time I was here, he threw a four six, and you gotta have, if you're a class X right now, Marks don't help you. You need strikes. If, if this first shot is not a strike, the game is theoretically over at this point, and Arsenal will go up 3-1. Shot right here. It's got to be a strike. And it is not. That is a 7-pin, and that effectively will end the game. Um, unless, again, there is improper tagging from Arsenal. I, I said you will win the game unless you guys do some improper tagging. You have not yet. <laughs> You did not properly tag yet. Right now they're discussing strategy. Wallen's making spare. So class X will, and, and this, these lane conditions today, hard. Hard. Very, very hard. Because I'm looking at the scores, that will be if, and let's put it this way, if Arsenal does not throw a strike in the 10th frame, that will be the fifth under 200 game that is going to be shot here in this match because Glass Axe just had the fourth one. 169 from them. And again, game mathematically over. If Nick Gavin gets more than three pins, Nick needs four pins on two shots. I've got faith here that he's going to do that. And he does, there's a strike, and that's game. Potentially, now they're gonna make the spare. Now they're gonna make the spare. Well, Audrey may make the spare. They're gonna make the exchange at this point. Audrey comes up. Now it is a proper tag set. Arsenal will, assuming that Nick stays right here in the next two shots and doesn't decide to wander over to lane 12 and throw a bowling ball. What do you do now? Isn't setting your lap though? Okay, sure, why not? Temp him. So now if she makes a spare, Arsenal will finish with a 202. If not, they'll finish with a 201. 
And that's, believe it or not, it's been one of the higher games that we've had here in this match. I mean, they shot 260. <laughs> yeah, they shot a 268 to your 216, and you shot a 223. And then we've had a 202, which is what you did. 182, 169, 189, 161. So not high shooting here. However, for the Arsenal, this is how they liked it, and this is how they've gotten it. At the end of game four, Arsenal 202, Class Axe 161. Arsenal is up three to one. There is three games left in this match. If the Arsenal wins any of them, they will be the new uncapped tag team champions, and they will start reign number two. For Class Axe, on the other hand, the margin of error is zero, in the words of John Dansbury, El Cheapo. So we are now going into game five. Arsenal is up three to one for those that have just joining us. And again, I will reiterate the trivia question. And the subject, women in the World Championship Series. The first female UBA welterweight champion came from the Northeast and she was crowned during Battle Bowl. Who is she? And I'll give you a hint. She, she was at the point, I don't know where she is now, she could still be on the same team, but at that point she was on the bowling bullies. That is my hint. Maybe that will help you, maybe it won't. And you have until the end of this game if it does not go to a game six. If it does, then you got more time to figure it out. But if it doesn't, then that's it, and I'll give you the answer, and then we save 25 bucks on the budget. Because right now, $25 gift card at stake, for Arsenal is the uncapped tag team titles at stake. And that was not what Audrey wanted, even though it's not terrible. 3-6 up there. Audrey saying pick it up. Nick says, okay, I'll try. Class acts right now starting game four with a strike. They must win this one and the next two. If not, all their belts belong to the Arsenal. Gavin looking to make the spare, and he will. Have some applause from Audrey. Again, this is game five. Arsenal up 3-1. Here, I'll get that in front of the mic. Yay! There you go. I've had Arsenal being my special guest commentator the whole entire match. Class acts right now is decided to hang out on the other side. And they are watching, and they got to figure something out because right, right now they got one game that's over 260 and three games that are under 190. And Nick needs to figure out lane 11 because that's a 4 9. Yipes. That was almost a 4 9 10. <laughs> almost was a 4 9 10. Probably would have, I was going to say, you probably would have made the 4 9 10. Let's see if you can make the 4 9. There's a shot of using the ball. It's got a shot here. Nope. Almost had a shot. Had a shot. Didn't do it. Buried 4 9. So Class Axe, who again needs this game, has got the lead. They need to build on it. Fawcett right now, and he looked very good in game three. And now comes back up in game five. He looked very good in game four also. Unfortunately, he had to make a tag. Now, can he double and give Class Axe a 23-pin lead? Essentially 33. First shot here is, ooh, picks out the nine. Nick, Gavin, and Audrey, oh, that's how you get the nine out. Yes, it is. <laughs> Trying to retire. You know, I've, I've seen jerseys. I've seen one uh, by Matt, not Matt Lucas. He was in Doctor Who. Um, Matt, I'm blanking on his last name, but his jersey name is Get the Nine Out. Get the Nine, get the nine Out. So, Nick, I don't think you have that sort of jersey, though you probably want one. I think it was Stone Nine is your jersey. Stone Nine? Pin? Stone Nine. And hey, left the Gavron. One, two, four. That just rolls off of your lips. You've been Gavroned. Yes, you've been Munson, now you've been Gavroned. When was the last time I left that? Now all of a sudden it's my spare? Yep. <laughs> well, screw you. Oh, it's, I think it's only because you missed it. You whiffed it completely. That is exactly the only reason why. Now is he going to do what you do in the second? Oh, well, he almost did what you did in the second frame, except he actually got two pins. Whatever, whatever. So he gavroned on the, actually he didn't gavron on the gavron, he would have missed all three. Yeah, he got two. So 55 for Class Axe in the third. Arsenal with a double here can take the lead right back. Now Nick Gavron must shoot the third frame and then they can think about tagging. At this point. Nick Gavron right now looking to get something on the board. There it is, there's a strike. Now will they tag? That is the question. Hell no, says Audrey. I just 
I just switched balls in the 10th frame, and it looked better, but if he's striking right now, I'm, I'm leaving him. I know he split this, this lane, but... Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting, getting people hanging out here. Gavin right now, fourth frame coming up. And, oh, he gets the 10 out. Does not need to worry about a nine. I give high fives to everybody in the area. Right now, the only people in the area are Arsenal. Uh, I, I can do low fives also. Too ah, too slow. <laughs> you know, I somehow knew it was coming, yet I decided to be just as juvenile as Nick Gavin is at this point. So I'll say hello to the camera right now. It is the Arsenal that is up by two pins. Class act needs to respond. That's duplicating what your opponent did is not a really good way to respond if your opponent left a 4-9. And there goes my paper again, out into the wobble yonder. Sorry, now this is game five. Arsenal, neither Arsenal nor Class Axe is tagged. That may be something Class Axe is gonna regret momentarily. Foster right now looking to make the spare. That ball's got to hurry up. He's not very happy. And there it is. There's the tag. And I'm going to use another Gordon Pepperism here. That tag may have been made a little bit too late. They have locked the barn door after the horses have eaten the children. Why would a horse eat a child? Where does that come from? They're carnivorous horses. You've never seen a carnivorous horse? After the horses have eaten the children. What is that? Is this like where Eric Hartman taught the uh, donkey punch? <laughs> So we'll see if I'm right there. There's Brian Walton, fifth frame tag, one, and he gets it. Yeah. Hey, look, looks good over here. Camera says all the pins went down. So that looks good. Doesn't matter if you saw him or not. It matters if the camera saw it. I saw it. Anthony never saw it. Isn't that right, Anthony? He's nodding, saying yes. Yeah, sure, Gordon, whatever you say. And right now what I say is that the Arsenal has a chance to increase their lead here. If... If uh, Audrey doesn't do that, and she did, three, six, seven, ten. Let's see, right now we've had four bowlers and three of them in this game. It looks like, unless she converts this, three of them have committed opens. So it looks like we're back to game one scoring all over again. Are we playing bowling, golf, snooker? What are we doing over here? And six, two on the count, which means Class X now has the lead right back. Fifth frame right now, and the scores are running just around as poor like they've been going all game. This time, 79 in the fifth frame by the Arsenal, and Class Axe could have a 94, even though they'll probably have an 84, because I have no faith in anybody carrying so far this game. Jesus! And, well, I have faith on Nick Avon getting a strike in the 11th, on lane 11. In the 11th frame, actually, between both teams. So right now, Arsenal... Sort of up by 15, except Class X is on a strike. Double right now puts them up by 15. A mark at least gives them a five pin lead. And Brian Walton, who I thought should have started over here in frame four on lane 12, is now up now. He's now on now. And that's why I thought he should have started there in the fourth frame. Double by Walton. Class X now up by 15 in a game they must have going to the seventh frame of game four. And I say they must have because right now Arsenal is up three to one. So if they get game number four, that is game, set, match, titles. Class X is trying to avoid that. And if you're trying to figure out the trivia question and do some research on it, you're looking to avoid that also. So right now I have no responses on that. Which means either they don't like the question, which is possible, or they're trying to figure it out and they and they haven't figured it out yet, which is also possible. Meanwhile, we got a ball return on lane 11. So while we're waiting on that, I will once again repeat the question: Your first UBA female welterweight champion came from the Northeast, and it came a number of years ago at Battle Bowl, which she won the title. Who is she? And I will accept either her real name or her UBA name. And I gave you a hint on she's on the bowling. She was when she won the title on the Bowling Bullies from New York. So what really good UBA female bowlers? 200 and under. Okay. 
Uh, just thinking now, now you've been on a couple of, I know you've been on the Vixen's belt, on the belt list. I believe you're on the cruiserweight list as well. No, on the welterweight list. Uh, no, I think on the cruiserweight, because above, cruiserweight's above 200, like 200 to two, whatever. So yeah, I think you're a cruiserweight. On cruiserweight then, yeah. Vixen's, was she ever on the Vixen's list? Uh, I'll, uh, no, she was not. She was just on the welterweight, not in the, not in the Vixen's list. There's, there's another hint. Hmm. I'm not even trying. Can <laughs> you name the person I'm talking? He said from New York. Definitely. From the Bowling Bullies, New York. And it's under 200 average. Yes, welterweight. Under 200 average bowler. And it, it, you're a female welterweight champion, Nick? Yes. Is there something about you I don't know? Uh-huh. There's a lot you don't know. There is a lot. I don't, I don't, uh, yeah. I'm not sure I want to know. I'm not sure I want to know about the secret life of Nick Cavern and how, she how he disguises himself as a bowler, 40 pins under bowling average ability. Brian Walton right now looking for three in a row, gets it. Gets it, buried, and that's why I was saying, you should have tagged him in earlier, but nobody listens to me, I just do commentary. I just do commentary. And right now, class acts still up by 15. Gavron, if he wants to keep it that way, he's got to throw a strike here in the seventh frame. Now again, Arsenal again has got a cushion. They do not need to win this game. They do not even need to win this game in game six. But if that happens, they do need to win game seven. Gavin right now wants to see if they can win game five. Not that way, he will not. 8-10. Well, at least it's not the nine. He got the nine out. That, that's the only good news I can give Nick at this point. Nick and Lane 12 right now do not get along. It's sort of like peanut butter and vinegar at this moment. And don't try peanut butter and vinegar, it's not good. Neither is that spare attempt. Nick Gavin right now leaves the stone eight. So they are getting, they are right now have a 107 in the seventh and they are in danger of getting blown out here in game five. Tag number three to Audrey. And well, 610, not terrible. However, at a big however here, two trips to land or the red numbers may cost Arsenal game five. So right now, Audrey is looking to make the spare. If she makes the spare and Arsenal go out, it's a 185. Class Axe, 244. If they go out, and well, Audrey made the spare. So basically, Arsenal needs to go out and they need a plethora of mistakes from Class Axe. Just one mistake will not do. They need a bunch. And Chris Fawcett is trying to make sure that that does not happen. However, my, my money, however, is on class acts at this point, taking game, taking game five. So, Fawcett right now, that ball looks good. It is four in a row for class acts. It's, it's funny because somebody was asking me that they need to see me after this match. Turning around behind me, I believe I know exactly why I was asked to come see them later on. Meanwhile, though, you may know the answer to this trivia question because you're from a New York team. And I asked a trivia question. I'm here with Kevin Key. Hello, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. So I will ask you this question. Actually, if I see him make five in a row, he won't four pin. Actually, I'm sorry, six pin. I'm looking over here at the monitor, and it is a little bit in reverse. You don't see it in reverse. I do. So sometimes when I'm calling it off the monitor, you're like, oh, wait, that's off. Like Carl said, 2 8 10. Well, yeah, that's true, because I looked at it through the monitor, and through the monitor, that's what it looked. It looked like that in reverse. And I'm silly. That's why I did that. And he made the spare. So the trivia question was, the first female welterweight champion in the UBA was in the Northeast and she won the welterweight title. And she was from the bull Bowling Bullies and she did it at Battle Bowl a couple years ago. Do you have any idea who that is? Kevin is quickly shaking his head saying no. I asked because you are from what district? Uh, you're from what franchise again? Franchise. You're from the franchise. From the franchise called the franchise. Uh, Bowling Bullies is not in that district. So yeah, you probably would not know then. Figure maybe you would. Somebody out there. Or hey, this could be a budget saver question. Nick right now, going up there, game five, that's their fourth and final tag. Hey, got the nine out. <laughs> Finally got the nine out, however, a little bit too little too late here for Arsenal, un unless Class Axe does something really silly, like again, that 
aforementioned inappropriate tagging or decides that Chris Foss is going to make good on his threat if he puts the ball in his gutter, he's going to sell all of his bowling equipment. One, one of those two things needs to happen at this point for Arsenal. If it doesn't happen, and I doubt that it's going to, then class acts will cut the deficit down to 3-2. Nick Avonford looking for new equipment. Maybe he's trying to find the balls that Chris is threatening on selling. So now we got, what is that? What do we have coming out of the bag? Trend 2. That looks like a trend 2 that's coming out of the bag. So we have a trend 2 coming out. And Nick Abrin is trying to adjust his equipment. Again, I'm not going to say what everyone wants me to say. That is, that is way too low-hanging fruit. I will just say he is trying to adjust his equipment, which again also sort of sounds sturdy in its own right. But, uh, yeah. So right now, here in the middle of the break, I will once again, you guys got an extra game to figure this out because this does not end the match. The first female welterweight champion was on Bowling Bullies and she won the title at Battle Bowl. And yeah, we're gonna put that trivia question up. And I may have to type it because I see one typo in there already. So here. Trivia is not spelt T-R-I-V-I-A. I mean, it's spelt T-R-I-V-I-A. There we go. First welterweight female champion in the UBA was from the Northeast. Who is she? That's the question. She went at a battle ball. She's from the Bowling Bullies. And Nick Gavin finishes off for four in a row with the Arsenal. They will finish with the 187. And Chris Crossett will finish out. So that will be their fourth and final tag. There will not be improper tagging, which sounds dirty, which is why I'm going to say it that way. So Nick can be happy that I said it that way. There is not an improper tagging violation, so this game will count. Oh, well, we're, we're chatting on certain things at this moment from other bowlers. Foster right now looking to finish this out in style. Right now, so far so good, there's a strike. 243 for class acts if they go out the door. I should, I'm sorry, 223 if they go out the door. Baby, baby, where did my math go? Cause it left me in the middle of this game. Strikes out for 223. Right now he's got the first, so right now they're in two teen territory. They already have the game, and they dropped down their deficit from two games in the hole to one game in the hole. There's another strike. Oh, there's Carl Buckley. Carl Buckley, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. That that was nice of you to say. Much appreciated there. We d I did do pretty good at Tales on Saturday. I can't lie there. We, we did not stink at the Pygo Tile table on Saturday, I will say that. Uh, Fossa coming up, striking out the 10th frame, he does. So at the end of game five, Class X, 223, Arsenal 187. Arsenal's still up, but their lead is cut from 3-1 to one to 3-2. to two. Game six, and this is always the pivotal match, obviously. Arsenal still only needs to win one game. However, if they do not win this one, they must win the next one because that will be game seven. And as we all know, anything can happen in game seven. So Arsenal almost certainly doesn't want to see it go there. Audrey Snell is starting out for Arsenal and she starts with a 10 pen. Brian Walton will be starting for class act. So looking over here right now, nobody is attacking that trivia question. I came up with a stumper. Usually, I'll ask something and they'll get it within the first five, 10 minutes. Not this time. I'm, I'm, I'm being especially evil today. I like it. Evil Gordon. <laughs> so, Audrey's looking to make the spear here on the 10 pin. Uh, I think she'll make it. She does. So, Audrey will be starting on Arsenal game Game six, Brian Walton will be doing the same for class acts. 
Both teams, again, if you just joined us, both teams need to make four tags. You cannot make more, you cannot make less. And if you just joined us, it is game six. Arsenal is up three to two. If they win this, they become the new champions. If they don't, we go to a game seven. And then it will be that time, as it says, on Brian Walton's jersey, and Brian Walton with a strike. Class Axe with a strike could take the lead here with a double in the second frame. And again, they desperately need the lead because they desperately need to win. If they lose, that is it. Over Donsky. Juan right now going up. Look at lane 11. Lane 11, which has caused so many issues for so many. Actually, both lanes have caused issues for everybody right now. Big double on the board. Class X once again takes the lead. The champions are now starting to show why they're champions. Because the first couple of games, it showed like that they were better off playing snooker. Do you like snooker? He might lose them. I like snooker. So I'm wondering if that was an Olympic game. Curling, I think, Winter Olympic event. I like curling also. And Audrey maybe wishes that she was doing that right now. One, two, four, ten up on the board. And right now, Arsenal does not need to win this game, which is good because if this was game seven, they would be in trouble right now. The lanes are starting to dry out at this moment. I don't know if this is good or bad. Audrey gets a spare. That's the first open from Arsenal in game six. Right now, this has been a struggle fest for both teams, or as we like to call it in the UBA, they're on the struggle bus at this point. Arsenal may be looking to stop off at that depot and get off the struggle bus so far. However, that being said, uh, we know that, that hasn't already happened. Now, right now, I'm here with Jay Collins. Hello, Jay Collins. Hi, Mr. Pepper. How you doing, sir? I'm well. How are you? Doing okay. Now, Jake is still, last time I checked, a member of Arsenal. Would that be accurate? That is correct. How do you like how your team's doing so far? I like Nick. <laughs> do you like to speak monotone like a robot? Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Audrey with the strike. I won't. I can't see. I can't go monotone over here. Okay, thank you, Nick. Anyway, so I may have to keep the microphone away from Mr. Gavin right now at this moment because he's, he's being a little saucy right now. So Audrey with the strike right now. However, and a big however here, Class Axe with the front two and a chance to blow this one open early. Brian Walton again has got to come in. He's got to bowl three games, three games, three frames. Third frame coming up. That ball looks good to me. A little bit high, though, for pin. See, the nice thing about everybody, I'm sure people are chatting about, yeah, hey, Eric Rosado, what is up? Lane's dry, two minutes left in practice. Yes, usually they are, not today. So here, let's chat with Audrey here. Eric Rosado is saying the lanes are usually dry. Audrey, you've been bullying on this. Please explain to Eric what's going on. Uh, they're definitely not dry, I can tell you that. Outside is not, is pretty flooded and uh, starting to break down a little bit now, but first game was rough. It's not, not, not normal Lodi house shot. This is, this is extra special Lodi house shot. I don't know where, where it's from. Uh, it would be interesting. I don't see the oil mechanic here. Wondering what, what sort of uh, shot they put down there. Apparently this could be the Candy Crush oil special. And with that being said, there's a 245. I've got this. Says, you've got this. Well, he's, Nick is tagging in and right now, Class X needs to get the spear to keep the lead because even though theoretically on the scoreboard it says they're up by 39, they're also right now on a spare attempt. Arsenal is up on a strike, two more strikes, and that deficit's going to be cut down to two pins? Yeah, two pin deficit. So let's see what Nick Gavin here is, does going into the fourth frame. So right now, Arsenal looking to try to get right back into this one. Gavin coming up, looking for the double here. And he, he left, well, he left a single. He almost left a double, and then he almost left the 10 pin to go along with it. Could have been another 2 8 10 combo up there. Right now, it's just a 2 pin. So Arsenal will remain behind. They will, yeah, they won't make any ground. They're still going to be behind by around 26 pins. Assuming he makes a spare her anyway. Arsenal up by, actually take that back, 22 pins. Going into the fifth frame. 
And once again, we have that same 70s, 80s, 90s, 60s look here in, in that fifth frame. And for anybody that just came in saying, oh, it's an off game, no, this has been traditionally what they've been doing the whole entire match. Gavin, right now, that ball needs to hook in. It does. Gavin, Audrey Snell's last shot on lane 11 was a strike. Nick Gavin's first shot this game on lane 11 is a strike. Class Axe has got to get back to doubling or they can be in some trouble. Right now, they still have a 22-pin lead, but we've seen Arsenal start to roll off some strikes, and if what Audrey's saying is correct, that the lanes are starting to break down, it could be sooner rather than later that Arsenal starts to string. If that happens, Class Axe has got to start stringing as well. Or else I'm going to be ending the trivia question here at game six because Arsenal will win. Right now, they're not. It is Class Axe with a 22-pin lead going into the fifth frame. Here's Fawcett, by the way, that is tag number one for them. Arsenal has made one tag, both teams have three tags left, and there's a strike. Right now, Class Axe maintaining a 22-pin lead as we go into the second half of game six. Class Axe up by 22, they are down in the match three games to two, so they've gotta win this one to prolong the match. Move to, if they do that, they move it to a game seven. I'm not even gonna bother asking Eric Rosado if he knows the answer to the trivia question, I know he doesn't. But it's always nice to hear from him. Fawcett right now looking for the double. That'd be a big shot here. He doesn't like the shot. He's very lucky. He only left the four pin. There probably should be a couple of other pins standing on the right side of the lane to go along the four pin, but he gets lucky. Leaves just the four. Spare here will continue to give them the lead. However, it won't be a big one if Nick can figure out what to do on lane 12. Because it looks like he's figured out, well, not throw it like crap is good. Because we know he knows what to do in lane 11. On lane 12, he created a new bowling shot for himself. That would be game one. When he left the 1-2-4. I'm pretty sure he does not want to do that again. I think if he does do that again, we will see a look on Audrey that Nick probably does not want to be seeing at this moment. Gavin right now, first shot. That's a little high. He gets away with it. All right, lefty. <laughs> Get, good ball, lefty. I'm, I'm wondering here if Jake Rollins taught him that because Jake is a notorious lefty. Uh, not probably didn't teach him that. However, right now, Arsenal's lead is 12. Arsenal's deficit is 12. They're not leading yet. The Arsenal's deficit can go down to two with another strike here. And we've already seen his ball looks buried on the last shot that he left here. No, not buried. A little bit too high. Pays for it. Nine pin. To, to be fair, that was not the same buried shot that he put on there the last two balls that he threw. To be fair, the halfway mark scores are actually higher than they've been during the whole entire match, which is saying a lot right there. 106 at the halfway mark for Class X, 93 for Arsenal. Nick will get the spare. So right now, Arsenal's trailing by 13. Yeah, that's right, 13. As we go into class of Axe's half of the second, of the seventh frame, I'm sorry. Again, this is a game class Axe must win because if they don't, Arsenal wins the titles. If they do, we go to a game seven. Nick was very happy when I said Arsenal wins the titles. I saw a little mini golf clap. Golf clap. Nick goes, yay. Chris Fawcett does not want to go yay. He wants to go yay if he sees a strike here. He does, yay, which is what Chris Fawcett's thinking right now. Big shot there. He's saying more than yay. He's doing a couple of slaps. Tag number two over to, over to Brian. Brian Walton right now. I almost called him Brian Fawcett. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, Brian Walton. Or Walden. Lane 11, big shot here from Class Axe if he could make the double. Double will keep them in the lead. If he does not throw a double, and that is the wrong double to make right there. That is the 6, 7, 10. And all of a sudden, it went from being up guaranteed, up by around 33 pins, or at least 13 pins, to now Arsenal can take the lead going into the eighth frame. And if they do that, titles are up for bids. He's got to get to here at least looking for the spare. Doesn't do it. Class Axe right now, 154 in the eighth frame. If they go out to do it, it's a 214. What that also means is that if the Arsenal can double somewhere, either in the eighth or the ninth or the 10, and keep serve with Class Axe, 
then we're looking at new champions. Audrey Snell, like right now, looking for set double, and that that's a mess. One, two, eight, ten. And Class Axe right now, even if Audrey converts the spare, Class Axe right now is breathing a huge sigh of relief at this moment. Because even if she gets the spare, that's even if she makes the spare, that's a bad count on that first ball in the tenth frame. I mean, on tenth frame, the first shot going in the tenth frame, maybe makes it. She does. That is a good spare attempt. However, instead of being in the lead because of both the sp the non-strike and the low count on the spare, Arsenal is down by five going into the ninth frame. They're down 15 theoretically. Arsenal is on a spare. Class acts on an open. Here comes Cavern coming up. First shot here. Strike would be a huge up for Arsenal. They get it. Now, what that means is that Class Axe needs to go out the door. I believe Strike in the ninth, first two, and six in the tenth. And we see a game seven. Anything less than that, Arsenal can take it. And if they do, then there's no more match because it'll be over. Huge weight on Fossil right now. Here's tag number three, gets a strike. Now again, tag number four, you're tagging in Brian Walton now. Keep in mind, he left before 6'10 over here. Theoretically, according to the rules, you could keep Chris Fawcett in there for the first few shots of the 10th and then tag Walton in on the fill. This is a very interesting strategy here. I'm not sure if it will work, but we will see if it does. So right now, both teams on strikes. Walton right now, first shot, that ball looks good. No, seven pin. That is a seven pin and all of a sudden the door is open for Arsenal to win game six and take the titles back. Big shot here for Brian. Now you can't tag now, this is the fourth and final tag. Brian's on his own, he's gotta make the spare himself. Ball's gotta huck a lot. And it does not and oh boy. So now all of a sudden, it went from Class Act striking out forcing a game seven to Nick Gavon needing a mark and Arsenal will win. Now if you notice here, change the tag strategies. Nick Gavron has not tagging in Audrey. He's trying to do it himself. We shall see. Needs a mark here. He does not. Now here's the interesting thing. According to the rules, and the Nick knows exactly what the rules are, so he's, he's not happy about it. He's gonna, gonna come sit over here. Audrey started the match. She must finish the match, so she's gotta throw the last ball, which means she's gotta shoot it. Theoretically, she doesn't have to shoot it. She should theoretically, the, well, I was gonna say theoretically, she doesn't have to shoot this. Nick can go after the spare, and this is what they're talking about right now. Nick can go after it, and then you can throw the fill at the end. As Audrey says, smart. So, you, well, in this case, you would forfeit the game, but it wouldn't matter because if he misses, you lose anyway. So, he's got to make this first of all, which he will. Now you make the tag. And now, Audrey needs four pins, and if she gets it, they're the champs. So, four pins right down the middle. She's got it, and she does. That is game set and match. Could be at the end of game six, Arsenal 189, Class Axe 182, and we have new tag team champions. In a game where you had more opens than spares, how does it feel to hold the belts in that sort of match? Yay. <laughs> you said high scoring. Nope, not high scoring. No, it was not. Your, your winning league game, last game was 189. So now you've told me during the match that if you're going to lose, that's how you want to do it. In terms of a grinder match, how does it feel to be on top winning a grinder match? Happy. The last match we bowled was on in Montvale, in one of the easiest places ever, and I, I was struggling, but I didn't like it. It wasn't fun. We won the last game by a ton, but this was fun because you got to think it came down to one shot. <laughs> Talk to me about strategy at the end of game six. I sort of spoke about it over the microphone, and I know you were you were not only nodding along with me when I was talking about the uh, different things, and then all of a sudden you guys thought, wait a second, yeah. you don't have to shoot the spare. Talk I mean, to me about that. I mean, no, yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, you, li you listen to Big Bang Jake over there. Yeah, because normally I'm, I have no problem with my 10 pins, but I'm just not, I don't know, I'm off today. So it, it is what it is. So when I got up there and I really realized it doesn't matter. If we miss this, we lose anyway. So give it to someone who's going to most likely make the spare. And I mean, yeah, Jake, Jake had something to say too, and I'm glad that we stopped me before I went up to throw my 10 pin. <laughs> Now, keep him on Arsenal because he has a big. That, that's he's just for that reason, nothing else. <laughs> he, he's also won, won like titles and stuff no, also. No, just for the brain. Oh, just for the brain. <laughs> we, so we, now, we love Jake for Jake. Now again, now the comparison here with yeah. you guys, and and now the question becomes, and you may know this better than I would, Chris Fawcett yeah. could have done the exact same thing. Could've. He could have. In this case, he gave it to Brian Walton. Any yeah. thoughts on that rationale? Um, I don't know. Every team's a little different. Everyone plays it a little different. I guess they just they like to throw a full 10th frame. I don't think they ever went a 10th frame where they tagged in the middle of a 10th frame. Uh, they did not. They did not split ever during the match. And I guess some people just play like that. Nick and I, all very more often than not, will split a 10th frame, whatever we need to do. Yeah. So now how does it feel once again, Only, still only female to hold the uncapped, heavyweight, uh, uncapped tag team title? It's pretty cool. I mean, I have someone to bowl with that I can kind of lean on. I mean, today I definitely leaned on Nick a little bit. I have my days, but I'm glad Nick was able to carry me today. So it's it's cool though. You can make an argument that especially the one two four out there that he leaned on <laughs> lent on you just as much. The first two games I was on, and then you know, kind of Nick definitely took the took the reins there, which is nice. So, but it's an uncapped match. I mean, every team we bowl is is good. So. That's, it's fun. We like to have fun. You can't have an ego. Yeah. Not, not with me commentating, no, because if you have an ego with me there, it's getting deflated very, very quickly. It's a lot of things getting deflated around you. Pause. Anyway, <laughs> last, last questions, comments, anything else before we wrap this one up? I knew that was coming, yes. <laughs> Audrey, while, while I view that here, Audrey. No, I mean, we're just excited to have the belts back. Hopefully we can hold them for a while, and we're excited to bowl whoever comes along. Yeah.